good evening to all of you so uh, let me just uh, provide the basically a high level overview about the module uh, initially uh, so according to the plan that i have uh, developed uh, we are going to have about uh, as i could remember around uh, 13 to 14 sessions so um, basically we start with uh, laying the foundation and uh, gradually we will uh, drive through various concepts of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning aspects and uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, discuss about uh, some of the technologies applications which are being uh, widely used in the AI industry as well. So uh, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm uh, Kanika Vidanage. Mm, I uh, completed my PhD in artificial intelligence. Uh, basically, I'm a researcher. Uh, so uh, if you just Google, uh, you might be able to locate uh, my publications. So so far, I have done uh, about uh, close to 40 publications uh, in the area of artificial intelligence. Uh, my specializations are mainly into healthcare informatics. So basically, uh, <clears throat> I use uh, AI uh, and uh, AI concepts uh, to uh, improve the quality of life of human beings and also uh, to uh, improve the use experience of patients uh, and doctors and various stakeholders associated with the medical discipline, mainly not limited to that. So uh, um, I will share uh, some of my experiences uh, as a researcher uh, with you while we are going through this subject. <clears throat> uh, so currently, uh, actually, I am employed as the head of research and uh, AI, so which is uh, also into AI, and we do a lot of AI-related stuff, local and overseas. So there are about uh, close to uh, 17 uh, AI engineers uh, working in my team, uh, covering various aspects. So that's a very brief overview about myself. Uh, so, so basically, uh, uh, when we are discussing, uh, I'm planning to do uh, various uh, hands-on implementations. Uh, so I, uh, I'm expecting you also to join with me and do those uh, implementations uh, with me. So I will explain the codings and why we are doing those things uh, step by step. So uh, we will uh, start with the basics and we will gradually take up the pace. Uh, right. So I have shared a slide. I hope you might have got it, maybe. Uh, and this is another slide which I didn't share. Right. I will share it today, uh, maybe after the lecture. So you can have that as well. So this is a basically, uh, this provides a high level overview about uh, the discipline of AI and data science and why it is taking up a very high demand these days, et cetera, et cetera. We'll have better to learn about the domain that we are going to investigate initially. <clears throat> so uh, usually uh, I, share the slides uh, close to the lecture because I want uh, uh, the participants to have the curiosity about what we are uh, going to discuss uh, rather than the contents that are in the slides uh, we discuss the practical perspectives and implementations actually I use the slide as a uh, sort of a guiding aid to myself to okay so uh, now, data science, right? We refer data science as the uh, set and artificial intelligence, machine learning, 
and uh, some other uh, areas, we refer those as subsets of the data science. So basically, uh, uh, there are multiple ways we can solve problems when it comes to uh, AI and data science discipline. I think that is a very fascinating thing. If we think with our real world in, uh, life, you know, for certain patients, sometimes when they are sick, amoxicillin might not work. They might be allergic to amoxicillin, right? Then doctors might give penicillin or sephorex or ampicillin, another antibiotic, right? Similarly, uh, in the AI and data science discipline, uh, we have a lot of technologies available. Uh, so once we uh, reach to some level with our understanding about the concepts, we might be able to decide the most eligible technique that can be utilized to solve a problem, right? Because uh, for, for certain uh, areas, for, when you are trying to solve certain problems, some technologies might not work. For an example, let me share a small experience. Uh, I did a research project with uh, one of a student uh, and uh, he wants to do classification of moonstones. Sandakada uh, Pahanawal classified that, right? According to the era, I can name it. Yugaya Anu Sandakada Pahana classified that, right? But the problem is uh, when we are planning to develop that sort of systems, uh, using machine learning related approaches, we might need to have very large data sets, right? You know, there are repositories like UCL, Kaggle, where you can download data sets, but there are no data sets about Sandhagada uh, Pahana available, right? So uh, he faced a lot of issues uh, because initially he has developed the proposal uh, telling that he's going to use uh, machine learning for this without doing a proper background search. But uh, when the research bega began, uh, he identified that data sets is going to be a curse for him. Uh, so uh, with that approach, actually, I advise him to chain the, uh, chain the technology. So from machine learning, we shifted to ontology engineering, right? So you can maybe Google on that. During our program, we will discuss ontology engineering as well. So that is another uh, evolving and very uh, important advanced branch in uh, AI, where you can work with limited amount of data. Usually, if you are using ontology engineering approaches, we don't need actually data sets. So in ontology engineering, actually, we interview people we get the knowledge, right? For an example, if let's say you want to develop a um, knowledge base about COVID-19. COVID-19 is a very recent disease. You might not have large data sets, but currently you have, right? You might not have because the, uh, it, it became a pandemic. Therefore, though that it's not that much uh, older, we have large volumes data. <clears throat> but usually in certain disciplines, we don't have large amounts of data. So if you want to develop a knowledge base for COVID-19 and assume we don't have significantly sized data sets as well, what you would do, let's say you can interview with general physicians or medical doctors. You might ask what are the symptoms of COVID-19 uh, and how you treat vaccination procedures, right? You can interview them and get the knowledge. Then once you get that knowledge, we can create machine understandable knowledge models. We refer it as human and both human and machine understandable. We use technologies like RDF and OWL, that is a resource description framework and ontology web language. So we can basically uh, represent the knowledge of the consultant in a machine understandable manner. Then we can couple that with reasoning engines or maybe a chatbot, right? So if I use a if I use a end user when end user types certain things about uh, the 
COVID-19 maybe. So it will basically, as a chatbot will be the interface, it will accept the user input, then it will go to the ontology engine or the knowledge model that we created. Reasoning will happen and it will uh, uh, provide us a response, some, some, something similar as we are getting a response from a consultant, right? So I think that is a very uh, a nice, fascinating approach, which is currently av available and evolving uh, in the uh, arena of uh, artificial intelligence. So uh, now, uh, now what is the basic difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning and statistical analysis? Let me start with machine learning. Now in machine learning, actually, we use mathematical and statistical concepts plus computational concepts. So machine learning is a mixture or, or a blend of mathematical concepts and computing concepts together, right? That we require at machine learning. So uh, statistical uh, analysis is another separate discipline. We are using statistics only, right? We can predict, analyze patterns, analyze trends, and we can do various forecastings. Like for an example, using things like uh, regression, right? It's a good example for uh, statistical analysis. So I repeat, statistical analysis is purely based on maths and stats. Uh, when it comes to machine learning, we use uh, statistical concepts and computational concepts like data frames, then uh, we work with data sets, right? So it's a, it's a combination. Then how those two things are different from artificial intelligence? Now, artificial intelligence concepts are derived uh, basically uh, after analyzing about the behaviors of living creatures. I will not say as humans, it is living creatures. <clears throat> basically we use, we, we now, there are concepts like swarm intelligence. You can Google and check, right? Maybe you might have you might have heard. Swarm intelligence concepts have been derived. How insects are behaving, right? You know how bees bees are behaving, how ants are behaving, right? They behave as flocks, as clusters. They uh, there is a there is a way how they communicate, right? Uh, if an ant identify some food, right? Uh, so then, then the, that ant will communicate that uh, message to the other people in the colony through pheromones, right? So those are biological, zoological concepts. Uh, Why are analyzing these biological, zoological concepts? Computer scientists have developed certain algorithms, right? So what very good example is uh, swarm intelligence. Then neural networks, right? Neural networks is all about how our brain works. Inside our brain, we have neurons, right? These neurons are communicating with each other through electrical impulses. So why are analyzing that anatomy? Computer scientists have come up with neural networks. Then we have convolutional neural networks, a, a special form. We refer it as CNA. So uh, computer scientists have come up with this mechanism via analyzing the visual cortex, the, the backside of our brain. Right? <clears throat> Why analyzing that part? So basically, uh, uh, when we analyze biological concepts. I'm not telling it's only as uh, uh, human concepts, right? Because ants and genetic algorithms, that's about how mutations happen, right? How inheritance happen, how features of the parents are being transmitted to kids, children, right? So that mechanism has been identified and genetic algorithm concepts have been developed. 